Hey everyone, I'm Cameron Bertuzzi and you're watching the first video of a playlist of videos responding to 20 arguments against God's existence. If you want the link to the playlist, just check the description. Here is the first argument. There's no evidence. We start this series off with a little bit of irony. What evidence does Hemet give that there's no evidence? There's no evidence. Saying there's no evidence is not the same thing as showing there's no evidence. So if theism can be dismissed that quickly, I mean, so can this first argument. The second point, even if it's true there's no evidence for God, that doesn't necessarily mean that God doesn't exist. You might have heard the saying, absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. So before we found evidence for the Big Bang, for example, that didn't mean that the Big Bang didn't happen. The fact that we lack evidence really only means that we lack evidence. That's all that it means. So in other words, even if it's true, that there's no evidence for God, and I'll talk about that in a moment. It doesn't necessarily follow that we have some kind of argument against God's existence. But the real issue here, and this is my third point, is that there's plenty of evidence for God. I mean, we don't even have to call it real evidence. We can call it candidate evidence. By candidate evidence, I mean data and phenomena that professional philosophers have argued counts in favor of God's existence. I'll repeat that. By candidate evidence, I mean data and phenomena that professionals have argued counts in favor of God's existence. So this would rule out any kind of like banana argument you might have heard from your pastor or your friend. No, the arguments that I'm talking about as candidates are those that have been submitted by professionals in cosmology and in physics and philosophy, and they've submitted these to journals for peer review. So here's just a couple examples of the type of candidate evidence I'm talking about. The first one is the universe itself. There's got to be some reason why our universe has billions of galaxies instead of billions of slimy triangles. And you can't actually use the universe itself to explain this. That'd be like explaining the existence of a chicken in terms of the chicken. I mean, that's circular. So the question we face then is, well, what type of thing could create the entire universe? God could. And some philosophers are actually arguing right now. I, in fact, I interviewed one recently for our podcast is that only a being like God, in other words, a perfect being, only that kind of being would be a sufficient explanation for the entire universe. And keep in mind, this is just one piece of evidence. I've actually discussed this with another atheist, Cosmic Skeptic. You can watch the video there. It's I've got it either on this side or this side, whatever. The second piece of evidence, uh, philosophers have argued that the fact that we can even trust our brains at all to produce accurate beliefs about the world is evidence for God. Third, they've argued that the order and fine tuning in our universe is very, very strong evidence for God. Fourth, they've argued that the fact that our universe can actually be discovered Covered by science itself, oh, and that it's also written in the language of mathematics is evidence for God. Fifth, professionals have argued that beauty is actually evidence for God. Then there's the argument from miracles and the argument from consciousness. The list of candidate evidence is actually pretty long. So here's an analogy I want you to think about. Wouldn't it be kind of silly if I was making a video, 20 arguments against evolution, and started out by saying, well, there's just no evidence. Like, would anyone take me seriously or would any serious person take me seriously? I doubt it. What you'd have to do, like any honest human being would, is deal with the best evidence for that position. So here's my fourth and last point. The entire case for Christianity is not built on like one little tiny piece of evidence, but it's actually a convergence of many different types of evidence, like in metaphysics and ethics and cosmology and physics and so on. And basically, the idea is that all of these evidences point in one direction. As homicide detective J. Warner Wallace notes, quote, most of my cases have relied on the cumulative nature of evidential inferences, end quote. And my point is that the same is true for Christianity. I mean, what else would you expect? So in summary, Hemant, rather ironically, gave no evidence that there's no evidence. To paraphrase Christopher Hitchens, what can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Second, since absence of evidence isn't necessarily evidence of absence, this isn't necessarily an argument against God's existence. Third, it's actually dishonest to say there's no evidence for God without at least ruling out some of the candidate evidence. And fourth, a cumulative case for Christianity can still be built even if each individual piece of evidence won't convince you on its own. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. The next video in this playlist features one of the biggest 
the most popular arguments against Christianity, the problem of evil. So if you're in the playlist already, just sit tight. You're going to be taken there to the next video automatically. And if you aren't in the playlist, go to the description or just click here. Should be able to get there that way as well. Oh, and uh, by the way, Christianity is true.